for the word of the Lord. Turn our Bibles. We're still in our series, you all. Turn our Bibles to Acts chapter number 8. And to all of our first-time guests, my wife and I would like to greet you personally after worship and be able to kind of shake your hand but take a photo. And all of our first-time guests have a gift for every first-time guest who comes uh, to us to worship with us as well. Amen. 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 Karen's such a regular attendee. I don't call Karen no guest. Amen. All right. All right. She's a regular attendee over there. Amen. 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 Acts chapter number 8, starting at verse number 29. Uh, our youth are with us. Our youth normally are in their own service. They're here with us today. Uh, and then they'll be leaving going down state after worship you all to be cater to a youth explosion. Amen. 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 Even now, even now, we wish them a good trip. Amen. 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 And, and, and that they get down there and, and explode. Amen. 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 Well, in the Holy Ghost, don't explode. Amen. 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 Come back, you know. But we thank God. We thank God for, for them and staff, Pastor Bell. Amen. And the work that he's doing with the ministry. Acts chapter 8, we're starting in verse Number 29, if we see that, can we say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Starting verse number 29, Acts 80 reads as follows. The Spirit said to Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. So when Philip ran toward the chariot, he heard the man reading from Isaiah, the prophet. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? He answered, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? Then he invited Philip to climb in and sit with him. The portion of scripture he read, he was reading was this. He was like a sheep being led to be killed. He was quiet as a lamb is quiet while his wool is being cut. He never opened his mouth. He was shamed and was treated unfairly. He died without children to continue his family. His life on earth has ended. The officer said to Philip, please tell me who was the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Philip began to speak, and starting with the same scripture, he told the man the good news about Jesus. Amen. God's word is already blessed, Amen. and so are we. I want to uh, share from this thought today the power of everyday moments. Amen. Uh, Amen. The Amen. power of everyday moments. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord God, and I want to. I, I, I employed a little bit of help this morning, you all, for the introduction. And so I want you to turn your attention to the screens. And um, we don't own the copyright to this, but it's some good stuff. Look at the screen, and I'm going to come back and talk to you. Moments in life, good and bad. And I use them as teaching moments because that's exactly what they all are. If you, if you, if, if you get really smart, Everything that happens to you, you should make a note of it. Because everything happens to you for a specific reason. There are no just haps in life. Every dark moment that you've ever had is preparing you for some place God is taking you. That, that way you, got it, you, you can start feeling a little bit better. Somebody taught this to me a long time ago. He said, Steve, in order to get to the life of your dreams, you're going to have to learn how to get comfortable being uncomfortable. When you hear people say all the time, I don't want to do nothing that I'm not comfortable with, this person's in trouble. Because whatever your comfort zone is, if you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you'll fail. If your comfort zone is this big and you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you'll fail. In order to succeed in life, you have to step outside of your comfort zone. But I want to tell you something about yourself. All of you are equipped to live outside of your comfort zone. God has proven it to you your entire life. I'm going to show you something that he's done for you that you haven't really paid a lot of attention to. See, a lot of people are afraid to jump. A lot of people are afraid to take chances. A lot of people are afraid to put things up for risk. And you shouldn't be. Now, you can be afraid, 
but you should learn how to go ahead anyhow. See, because let me show you something about yourself. For all the bad days you've ever had, for every day that you thought you wasn't going to get through, for every period in your life you did not see no way you could come out on the other side, your track record for surviving them bad days is 100%. You have survived every single one of them. Your track record for surviving bad days, y'all, is 100%. Yeah. And that's pretty good. Yeah. You can't name one bad day you ain't got through. When you lost your mother, and you felt like your whole world was crumbling? Because I thought I was going to die, man. When my mama left here, boy, let me tell you, that's the worst I've ever felt in my life to date. I'm 62 years old. But the day they told me my mama was going, when I had to pull the plug on that machine, and I had to tell that to the doctor, it was the worst period of my life I thought I was going to die. I survived it. I want you to think about all the bad moments you had that looked like you weren't going to make it. And then I want you to ask yourself, well, why did I make it? Right. Well, it's real simple now. It's simply because God ain't through with you yet. Yeah. Yeah. Everything you're going through is God preparing you for what he has for you. Text in is we have to prepare you all to make a difference. Yes, sir. We have to prepare to make a difference. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, uh, that Jesus, glory, right before he left to go back to the Father, he told the disciples and us, consequently us, he says that you will receive power, power. after the Holy Ghost comes on you, and you will be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and he says to the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah. Let me give it to you again. Y'all can help me with this thing. First thing he says is we will be his witnesses after we receive the Holy Ghost. He will be witnesses unto him, for he says, in Jerusalem. Everybody say, that's my family. That's my family. Yeah, yeah, Jerusalem is the family. Then he says, in Judea. Everybody say, that's my friends. That's my friend. Then after that, he says, Brother Johnson, after Jerusalem and Judea, he says, Samaria. Everyone say, that's, those are my foes. Oh, yeah, L O E S, the people you don't like. Ain't the people don't like you, people you don't like are your foes. Yet Jesus says we need to witness to our people we don't like also. That's right. I'm going to come back and deal with that in a second. Yep. Then he says, unto the uttermost parts of the earth, those who we call the foreigners. Everybody say the foreigners. The foreigners. So what Jesus says here then, Shirley, is that we have to be witnesses unto him with our family, our friends, our foes, and the foreigners. With the people who are close to us, with the people who are associated with us, with the people we don't want to deal with, and with the people we've never seen before in our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. He tells them this, bell. yet in the church in Jerusalem does something dynamic. They are very good at witnessing in Jerusalem or among their families. I mean, people, thousands at a time, Mother Butler, are coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thousands at a time, they're coming to accept him as Lord and Savior. But they, and it got so good to them, Anita, that they stayed right there. Jesus said, go not just to Jerusalem, but to Judea and to Samaria and to the rest of the earth. But instead of them going to Judea and to Samaria and to the rest of the earth, they got stuck in Jerusalem. So because they did not, Paul, do what he said in Acts 1 and 8, then Acts 8 and 1, he allowed them to become persecuted. And through Saul, after the death of a deacon named Stephen, the church began to be persecuted. And interesting, what happened in Howard is after the persecution came, Acts 8 and 1 tells us that they scattered from Jerusalem. And guess where they went? They went to Judea and Samaria. Y'all miss them, I'm going to give it to you again. Yeah, yeah. Jesus told them to voluntarily, Cato, go to Judea and Samaria and to the rest of the earth. They got comfortable where they lived, didn't go beyond where they lived, so he allowed them to become uncomfortable enough to make them leave. And when they left, they went to Judea and to Samaria, yeah. the very place he told them to go. Now watch this. When they went to the new places, Wendy, they did in the new places 
The same thing they did in Jerusalem, they shared the gospel. And when they shared the gospel, Daphne, in the new places, like they did in Jerusalem, God did in the new places, like he did in Jerusalem, people got saved. Yes. I wish I had some help yes. with that right there. Yes. When they went to do what God told them to do, in the places they went to, people it got saved just like they did in Jerusalem. Because parenthetically, let me help somebody understand this, you all. What the Lord does, watch this, is have us understand he's not just moving in the places you want to go. Right. Right. He's moving everywhere. Amen. Amen. He's moving through everyone we put our hands on and come in contact with when we allow him by his Holy Spirit to use us in every situation. Well, out of that Ruth Christ, the Bible tells us another deacon by the name of Philip, who was crowned as a deacon in Acts chapter 6. Here in Acts chapter 8, he's used by God to go to Samaria. Remember, Samaria, you all, were the foes, F-O-E-S, the people they did not like, Angie, that being the people from the from the uh, kingdom of Judah, southern kingdom of Judah, they did not like the Samaritans because their blood was mixed, okay? They didn't like them. Those in the southern kingdom had pure blood. Their blood was not mixed with any other races, yet those in the northern kingdom, of which Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom, their blood was mixed. And so, Josephine, they did not want to deal with them, yet the Lord said, I evil people you don't like to be saved. Right. Now, let me help somebody by saying it like this. Amen. Just because you don't like somebody don't mean Jesus don't love them. Oh, oh, I ain't going to help right there. I ain't going to help right there. Yeah, yeah. Caleb says, say it one more time. Just because you don't like somebody does not mean the Lord does not love them, which means we got to get out of our feelings. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody right now. We got to get out of our feelings when it comes to sharing Jesus with people. Just because you don't like them, how dare you not love them? No. Who are we not to love somebody enough to tell them how good Jesus is? Because if we're honest in this place, the Bible tells us in Romans that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. So while we were lying and cheating and cussing and doing all kind of crazy stuff, yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. died for us. Yeah. And if he could die for some people who hurt him, how dare we not share him with somebody he loves? Right. Right. Oh, right. my God. That's so good. Philip, Philip, Philip goes there, Daphne, and he shares Jesus. And look what happens in the place of the foes of the people they don't like. Salvation takes place. Miracles takes place. Signs and wonders take place there also because, bless your name, Jesus, God can move anywhere. Yes, 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 yes. Even the places we don't want to be, God can move there also. Oh my God, I got to move over there right there, Brother Johnson. But He can move, so I say everywhere. He can move everywhere. Well, the Bible tells us, Felicia, that after this happens, the Spirit of the Lord tells Philip to leave Samaria. And if it wasn't bad enough that he had to go to the foes, now remember, Jesus said, go to your family, go to your friends, go to your foes, go to your foreigners. They went to the family, they've been to the friends, they've been to the foes, but they had not yet been to the foreigners. But what the Bible tells us, Felicia, here in Acts chapter 8, that the Spirit of God tells Philip to leave Samaria and go to the desert because there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a man from Ethiopia who worked for the queen herself. He was headed from Jerusalem back home and God tells Philip, go out there and talk to this man because now he says it's time for the foreigners to know me also. Boy, yes, oh, y'all better get this preacher saying this morning. He says, you've been to your family, you've been to your friends, you've been to the foes, you ain't been to the foreigners yet, but I'm going to send you to the foreigners also because everyone needs to know who I am. So the Bible tells us, Patrice, that Philip goes to this man, this foreigner, he's riding the chariot, he had been worshiping at Jerusalem, I'm going to come back to this just one second. And he's reading from the scriptures from Isaiah, but he does not know what he's reading. The Bible says in Acts 8, verse 29, put it up there, please, Alicia. Look what it says. The Spirit said to Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Next verse. So when Philip ran toward the chariot, he heard the man reading, the Bible says, from Isaiah, uh, the prophet. Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? Verse 31. He answered, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? Then the eunuch invited Philip to climb in 
and sit with him. Verse 32, the portion of scripture he was reading from is this. He was like a sheep being led to be killed. He was quiet as a lamb is quiet while his wool was being cut. He never opened his mouth. He was shamed and was treated unfairly. He died without children to continue his family. His life on earth had ended. That's from Isaiah 53, 7 and 8. Go on verse 34. The officer said, the eunuch said to Philip, please tell me, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Verse 35, the Bible tells us, you all, that Philip then began to share for him about Jesus. He immediately then, you all, began telling him the goodness, the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, y'all got to get this because this man had been worshiping in Jerusalem. He's leaving Jerusalem. He's in the desert reading from Scripture, but he has no idea what he's reading. If we're going to be difference makers, you all, we got to prepare every day to take advantage of moments every day, which means then you all, just because somebody's been to worship and got a Bible don't mean they know Jesus. Yes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just because somebody's been to church and got a Bible don't mean they know who Jesus is. And we can't take it for granted just because they know how to tie my bow tie, see my hand up, that they know who Jesus is. We got to make sure we tell everybody we know how good God is to us. No, because sometimes you all, we ignore sharing Jesus with people because they look holy. Uh -oh, uh -oh. And then we ignore the people who don't look like they so know the Lord so much. I ain't talking to them. And he said, no, you got to tell everyone about me. See what this what happens, Corn? What happens? This man is in the middle of a desert. He's been to worship Joseph, yet even though he's worshiped, he does not know who Jesus is. Right. Even though he's reading the scripture, he does not know who Jesus is. And so the Lord sends him Howard, sends Philip Howard to a desert for one man. Y'all better get this. He sends him for one man. Philip could have got an attitude, Paul. I've been in a good revival in Samaria. You made me go to people I don't like, but I was there. I shared you with them. Now you got me in no man's land for one man, but I thank my God, you all. He still leaves the 99 to look for that one. Because I can leave the 99 and look for the one, then you got to care so much about that one that you leave everybody else behind to find that one person who needs to know Jesus. And some of the people we need to go talk to are in a desert by themselves. Yeah. Oh my God. Some of the people you talk to, Shirley, they, they're surrounded by people, but they're by themselves. Yeah. I don't want anybody ever been there. You surrounded, but you feel like you're by yourself. Yeah. In a room full of people, but don't nobody understand what you're dealing with. Right. You're related to people, but you can't trust nobody. Oh, I, I, got, I, got, I got some good say. I got a few people here this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you wish you would. I should have, would have, could have, but I can't. Because everybody I know lose lip sync shit. They keep talking and talking and talking and talking. And thank God, though, that God still knows how to go to the desert to find people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Woo. yeah. And difference makers whose price don't mind going to the desert to share. That's right. Good news. That's right. Now, the yes. good news, the, the good news, Sister Cato, is the gospel. The gospel is, I say good news. Good the news. news. The gospel is the good news. Watch yes. this. The gospel, then, the good news, Daphne, is, watch this, the story, the account of the virgin birth. That's the first part of the good news. Now, don't you miss that. Don't you miss that. Because that is enough to shout on by itself. Yeah. And it's not just the idea, Howard, that a virgin gave birth, because that's dynamic. But what the virgin birth signals is this to us, is that there are some things only God can do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he's willing to do those things in your life. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Somebody yeah. missed it. Somebody yeah. missed it. Yeah. Somebody missed it. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. There are some things only God can do. And what the virgin birth proves is that he's willing to do those things in your life. Yes. Let me back up and say it like this. Your doctor can say whatever your doctor sees. Right, that's right. And a lot of times what they say, when they say what they see, they saw what they said. They that's saw right. it. That's right. But guess what, you all? The virgin birth shows us there are some things that only God, 
that only God can do. And God says, no matter what everybody else says, no matter what everybody else sees, the fact that I came to a virgin, that point that she's still a virgin shows you, I can do what nobody else can do with your life. Oh my God. And in case you didn't know, that's some good news. I don't know who needs that good news right now, but I came to still tell somebody that there's some stuff going on in your life only God can do. And God said, the fact that I came through Mary a virgin, she stayed a virgin when I came out of her womb, means I can still move in your life, your health, your marriage, your kids, your finances, your job, whatever's going on, the good news is he's right here. Yes, yes. Oh, somebody shout good news. Johnson is the good news of the virgin birth, yeah. but the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, the triumphant resurrection of him on that Sunday morning, that third day he got up with all power in his hands, yeah. and one day he's coming back yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody shout just for me. Yeah, yeah if you say he'll come back just for you. Yeah. And that is yeah. Kion. Somebody say good news. Good news. Well, you all, the good news. But guess what? The good news is not just needed in your house. The good news is needed in the desert also. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my God. Yes. The good news is not just needed in the church house. That's right. The good news is needed in the courthouse. Yes. The good news is needed in the jailhouse. Yes. The good news is needed in the poorhouse. Yes. Yes. Oh, the good news is sure needed in the White House. Yes. I wish I had my 10 real people who say, yeah, preacher, some good news is needed in the White House. Some good news in DC this morning. The good news is needed everywhere we go, you all. People need to hear what? Good news. And he uses us, difference makers, to go share the good news with other people. Now I understand, understand, understand you all. Now I like that, but well, we got to be prepared then, Fozzie, to share the good news. Put the point from Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar, you all, said it like this success occurs. When opportunity meets preparation, we have to be prepared. So I say prepared. prepared. We have to be prepared, you all, to go share good news, and we will have success when we are prepared to go share that which God tells us to share. Well, that preparation, Angie, takes place in three different areas as we're sharing today. We have to be prepared, you all, uh, physically. We have to be prepared spiritually. And we also have to be prepared intellectually. Now, y'all get that? They ain't seen your sermons. Notes. You can take notes on this thing. First of all, we got to be prepared physically. Physically, you all, we got to be prepared. What does that mean? That means we got to be where God is moving. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Y'all miss it. Yeah, yeah. We, we got to be where God is, when I say moving. moving. Yeah, we got to be ready physically. We, we, we got to be physically where God is moving. Where he's doing, what he's doing, when he's doing, what he's doing. We got to physically be there. Watch this. Because what good is a servant who ain't never ready to serve? Right. I'm going to lay my forehead on that right there. Right. What good is a servant who ain't never available to serve? What good is a servant? Every time it's time to serve, we got something else to do. What, good, what kind of servant would we be? Wow, oh, wait a minute. What kind of service would you think you get? You go to your favorite restaurant, and every time you want some more water, the service sit back drinking water themselves. <laughs> now they drinking water, they looking at you drinking water. That's bad What? I'm thirsty myself. <laughs> You thirsty? We got a picture over here. We'll get no, 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 no. A servant got to be ready and present to somebody say, serve. Sir. A service down across has to be ready and available to serve you at all times, which means physically, we got to be where he happens to be. They don't miss this, but we got to be there, Francine, without complaining. That messed somebody up right there. We got to be there, folks, without complaining. What would Philip have looked like, Sarah Bonner, if when the Lord said go to the desert, he started pow, I got to go to the desert. Can't somebody go to the desert? I always got to be the one. Tell me to go to Samaria. I ain't like the people know how. Then I got to leave and go to the desert. I don't want to go to the desert. Tell somebody else. No, he had to be present. Yeah. 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 Mm, which means, watch this, watch this. Which means then we can't keep complaining about the places God sends us. Yeah. 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 Wow. 
can't keep complaining about the places God sends us. Whether it's your church, your job, your family, your block. Stop complaining about the places you said God sent you. Because how are you going to make a difference and you complain at the same time? See, it was okay as long as we did some Mary at the revival. But now we got to go to that hot desert with just one person. Now oh, I got to be out here. No, stop complaining. Because physically, if we're going to be ready, we got to physically go where God tells us to go without complaining about it. Yeah. Let me say it a different way. I'm going to go on. Mm. That job God gave you, watch this. That job that you have could be somebody's desert. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all hear me? Yes. That job could be somebody's desert. Oh, yeah. The job you complain about, somebody else could be lost at that job. Oh, you might be right. No. The place you go shop could be somebody's desert. That family you keep talking about could be somebody's desert. The people you don't want to deal with, they could be living in a desert. And you could be the Philip God has sent into that desert to help somebody else come to know him. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So instead of trying to run from your desert, be used in your desert. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Ooh, Kimberly Cato, please put that online right there. Instead of running from your desert, be used in your desert yeah. so you can transform your desert. Yeah. Let, let, let me say it, let me say it, let me say this so somebody understand. Because somebody gonna miss this thing right here, Shirley. The history tells us this unit reported directly to the queen herself, Queen of Ethiopia. He got saved, went back to Ethiopia, shared the gospel with her. She got saved. You know what she did? She told the nation to get saved. Yeah. While we arguing about a devil, God's trying to save somebody else's family. Yeah. 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 While we arguing about what the church is, God's trying to save the community. Yeah. While we arguing about why I got to be that God's trying to save somebody else's life. He yeah. said, stop complaining and let me use you in your desert. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But then we got to be ready, you all, spiritually. To be ready spiritually, you all, means uh, that our spirit man got to line up with what God is doing in this season of our lives. Amen. Which means we got to be praying for a discerning spirit. Yeah. God, speak to my spirit. Uh -huh. Show me what it is I need to know. Show me what it is I need to say and who I need to say it to. Right. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Show me what I need to know, what I need to say. And who I need to say it to so that I am always ready, watch this, to share you with those who want to receive you. And I don't get so stuck on some people I like who have said they don't want you that I use that as an excuse not to talk to somebody else. Right. Right. Come on, see, see, that there are two types of people, you all, that we're going to encounter. Go, go put that up there. There are two types of people we're going to encounter. Now, first are the people who are skeptical of Christianity and they're close to the moving voice of God. Yes, sir. It shows you in the house of God today, Rasai, you're going to meet some people who don't hear nothing about your God. Yes, yes, right. Yes, right. And we got to understand that that's their loss. That's right. Oh, see, y'all got quiet. Right. That's their loss. That's their loss. And it does not mean, it doesn't mean God don't love them, it means they don't want Him. Right. And because they don't want him, we can't keep spinning our wheels to people who say, I don't want your God. That's right. So then when we get to glory, because we get to glory, God ain't going to ask us why we waste the time. He ain't going to say, well, I understood you ain't talking to nobody else because you got rejected that one time. And you were so embarrassed. He's going to say, I gave a whole lot of other people to talk to. That's right. And you intentionally talk to the person who told you they don't want me. Yeah. But then the other type of people we're going to come in contact with you all are those who are not yet followers, but they are open to the idea of learning about Jesus. And those are the people, Karen, that we have to be open and be prepared to talk to and spiritually discerning, spiritually ready so that God can tell us, God, what can I say to this person? Now, let me quickly say this thing parenthetically, because I've heard even some around here, Mother Butler, they talk about the old time way and, and what worked for me and got to some out of face and shot, you better come to church next Sunday. And they showed up, because that's what I did. Well, let me tell you right now, first of all, understand something. To be spiritually ready means you got to understand times change. God doesn't change, but times change. Because times change, our method has to change. Yes. 
Ooh, it got real quiet yeah. right there. Yeah. Our message is the same, but our method has to change. Let me help you understand why, because this is what I do. You do what you do, I do what I do. Part of what I do is read research on these things, and the research I read, Shirley, told me that we're dealing with the second and third generation of people today who've never been to church. Y'all missed that. Now, oftentimes, Brother Johnson, when we was coming up, when I was coming up, maybe when you was coming up, uh, the, the, the traditional way of talking to people was about their problems. You need God because you're going through. You need God because it's bad. You need God because it's your poor. You need God because of this, that, and the other. And yeah, I do need God. I got to come back to God. But you know what's happening today, Cor? Because we got generations who've never been to church, who've never heard of God, and you know what they're doing? They're living very well. Yes, they are. So we can't tell them how bad it is to come to God, but they say, well, I don't need him for that reason. But the other thing is this, Sally Cross. Because some people have never been to church mm -hmm. and people they know have never been to church, then you can't tell them to come back to some place they know nothing about at all. Exactly. Right. No, right. I'm going to help somebody in this right. place. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. We, I, I can't go to you and say, come to church. You better get in church. They say, well, why? I ain't been my whole life. My mama never been. My auntie never been. My granddad never been. Why should I come to a place that nobody ever been? Right. See, when we were coming up, there was at least a knowledge of God in the community. Now, there's no knowledge of God in some communities, which means we can't use the approach from 40 years ago to reach people today. We got to do what God did the whole time. We got to invest in people's lives. Ooh, see, I, I know we, we just want to tell somebody to make them run. No, we got to invest in their lives. We got to prepare to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, put, put the quarter, put the quarter, please. This is from the book, You All uh, uh, Knowing God, Experiencing God. And, and, and what it says, you got the quote there, it, it's, it's, it should be there. It was there before. Well, I'm going to read it to you while she tried to find it. I'm, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this quote to you. And, and, and what it says, you all, is people don't ask questions about spiritual matters unless God is at work in their lives. Right. When, some, when you see someone seeking God, and or asking questions about Christianity, you're seeing God at work. When yes. people are yes. seeking God, yes. you all, yes. that's when God is at work in their lives. Y'all yes. uh -huh. with me so far? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But when people, Makita, start asking you questions, they want to know more about your God. Yes. And God is at work in their lives when they want when they start asking you, which means we can't keep ignoring people. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh my. That's right. Oh my. That's good. We can't keep ignoring people. How are we spiritually ready we keep ignoring people? How are we spiritually ready we don't want to know anybody except our family? Get out of your Jerusalem. Maybe that's why some of us have problems in our families. Because God is trying to get us away from our comfort zone to share him with some other people. My Lord. But then we have to be intellectually ready, you all. We, we, we get our mind has to be ready and prepared, Kion, to, so, to know what's going on with people so we can see where they are right then to tell them about our God. Watch this, which means that being intellectually ready, Cora, means you got to know something, something about the people God sent you to. Yes, you know what I just told you? Yeah. We, we, got to, we got to know Sarah about something about those people. So if they like, so, so first of all, uh, God help me understand from an intellectual standpoint, is this somebody I should invite to church or someone I need to be telling my story to right now? Okay. Is it somebody who's ready to be invited to church or someone who may not quite yet want to come to church yet I can tell my story? Okay. And if it's somebody coming to church then tell, show me God the best way to invite them. So maybe they like coffee. Maybe they're like my daughter Nalisha and they're coffee fiend. <laughs> Maybe they like my daughter in the leisure and they're a coffee addict. Yeah. You got the means, you got the means. <laughs> Maybe. So here's the thing, Wendy. Then we can invite them to a cup of coffee before church. That's right. That's right. I'll buy you a cup of coffee, 69 cents. It ain't the Starbucks, I understand that. But, but it, it, it's coffee. Perhaps they like tacos. Yes. Yes. 
so I tell you what, for the coffee drinkers in your life, meet me for a cup of coffee before church and join me for worship. I pay for the coffee. All right. yeah. For the taco lovers in your life, meet me for church. I take you to tacos after worship. Yeah. Yeah. Even for where you are, can't you see when we're intellectually ready, we take advantage of opportunities to invite somebody to God. But then there are some other brother who watch this may not quite get one of them to church, but they want to be in your life, and they're ready. And when they're ready, we can share our story with them. Now we can tell them how good God's been to us, and we cannot mind being vulnerable and transparent, Patricia Hall, help somebody else know how good our God has been to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Bible tells us, Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10, the Lord says, don't worry, because I'm with you. Don't be afraid, because I am your God. Our God, you all, will help us yeah. if we just prepared you all to make a difference in somebody else's life. Yeah. 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 Second thing I want to show you real quick in our text, not only you all must we uh, prepare to make a difference, but then you all, we, we see four illustrations of faith, okay? So I say four. Four. We have four illustrations of faith. Prior, Fozzy, uh to Jesus being crucified and prior to him being arrested and tried <coughs> and sentenced, and convicted and crucified, he spent time with his disciples in the upper room establishing the Lord's Supper. Prior to the Lord's Supper, he had the Last Supper. Now, what they may have thought initially, Sarah Bonham, was just another meal, another Passover, was so much more than that. Because what Jesus did, Anita, he used this time with them in the upper room, watch this, as a teachable moment. Uh -huh. He used as a time, Adams, to get with them and talk to them and impart into them one more time. Specifically, what he imparts into them is that the Holy Spirit is going to be sent back. After he leaves, he says, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to come back, Francine, in the person of the Holy Spirit. And so now I am Emmanuel, which means God with us, but he, Holy Spirit, will come live inside of us. And so I'm still with you, but this time I'm not just in front of you, I'm inside of you. Yes. And my job is to help you remember what I've been teaching. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. The job of the Holy Spirit is to help us remember what Jesus said to us. So he says in John chapter 14, verse number 26, but the helper will teach you everything, will cause you to remember all I told you. This helper is, I said, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Whom the Father will send, Felicia, in my name, he says. I'm going to send back Joanna Bonham, my spirit. And now get this, get this, get this. He's going to help you remember what I said. So when it's time to talk to somebody, you can say what I said. Yeah. You know, somebody missed that. I'm, I'm going to show you how I know they missed it. Say that, bell. He said, when the Spirit comes, He's going to help you, Melody, say what I said. Now, how do I know some people miss that? Because sometimes we're quick. Some saints are quick to cuss people out. <laughs> Don't y'all play with me. Don't y'all play with me. We're quick to talk about people. I ain't talking about unsaved folk. I'm talking about saved folk. We're quick to criticize, condemn, put people down. We're quick to be so critical what we don't want, what we don't like, what we don't think. Yet Jesus said when the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to help you say what I said. So either we didn't have the Holy Ghost or you ain't been listening to what he's been saying. Because if the word's coming out of your mouth, don't remind people of Jesus, then what spirit is driving you? Because he said, when the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to help you remember what I said. Yes, Which means too many of us are trying to say our original thoughts and say what Jesus already said. And we got to get to a place, Joseph, where we say what he said all the time. Why? Because people need to be saved all the time. Help me somebody. See, so the people we talk about, McKee, they need Jesus. The people who don't want to deal with your job, they need Jesus. Yeah. And how you going to share Jesus and you talking about them at the same time? <laughs> yeah. Got to be more careful. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus didn't talk about us, did he? No. He said a new commandment. Yeah. I give unto you. Yeah. That you love one another. Yeah. Even as I love you, you also love one another. And by this, to everybody know you are my disciple. 
Because you love one another. And that don't mean you don't get hurt by someone. That doesn't mean they don't disappoint you. That doesn't mean they don't discourage you. That doesn't mean you don't get angry sometimes. But it means when all that's said and done, you bless them anyhow. I ain't talking about blessing how we've been blessing people. Come on, somebody. I blessed them out real good. With all the blank and the blank, blank, blank and the blank. Blank, 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 blank. And blank you too. One thing our guests, those who watch, understand. Well, one thing we're delivering is we real. Yeah. No, because see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And one of the reasons people leave the church, particularly millennials, don't come back to church, because we come to church and we only want to talk about that Jesus makes us shout. Yeah. Then we leave the church because of people out. Yeah. And they say, I don't want that Jesus then. Because right. the church ain't dealing with the stuff I'm dealing with. Right. Well, not this church. This church going to deal with what we really deal with. Yeah. Come talk to my man. This church going to deal with what we really deal with. Because if we're going to get help with it, we got to talk about it. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Yes. And so what happens then, Joseph, I hear Joseph, what happens then, Joseph, is, 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 is we like to quote Ephesians chapter 3 only when it's convenient for us. But put the verse up there, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, now unto him, who's able to do it, and we might have to get them again, we say, yeah, 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 but here's the thing. When he wrote that, Wendy, he was writing to some people who lived in a place of idol worship. Uh, it was not just him talking about laying hands on people, Ruth Christ. He was saying he can help you be holy. Yeah. 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 I just said a bad full of words to somebody right now. He can help you be holy. Yeah. Now unto him. So when it's time, Karen, to remember what he said, and I don't want to say something else, when I need to be a difference maker, I can turn to him. Yeah. Who's able to do yeah. it. Exceeding. Yeah. Abundance yeah. of all I ask or think, according to the power that works in me. So instead of cussing somebody, I can bless somebody. Look at somebody. Grab, shake that hand up and tell the neighbor, the, neighbor. the, power, of the, Holy Ghost the power of the Holy Ghost wants to work in your life, work in your life. so you can bless everybody you meet. God and 
is the cross of Jesus Christ. Yes. And so I cross from my sin to salvation. But to get from sin to salvation, Karen, I got to go past the Father. Yes. And once I go through Jesus, past the Father, I'm saved. Yes. That's the bridge. But yeah, then next week, we're going to show you do versus done. Do, do versus done. Now, now, now do, uh, what, what, what does with that, Autumn, is there's some people, watch this, who think they can do something to get to heaven. Yes. So yes. depending on what I do, I do this, I do that, I do the other. They stay busy, stay active, I feed people, I help people, I clothe people, I give to the poor. I do all this kind of stuff. They do a whole lot, Makita. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, it ain't what we do, it's what Jesus has already done. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and next week, what we're going to talk about, you all, is, is, is get out of what you do and go to what he's done. Yes. So when you talk to somebody, Felicia, you can just talk about what he's already done. Yes. That can help them get saved right then. Yes. But, but then, you all, we're going to look at the morality ladder. Y'all know the morality ladder. Uh, the morality ladder, Corey, is people who think they're so good. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm a good person. I pay my taxes. Yeah. I don't beat my dog. Yeah. I feed my cat sometimes. <laughs> I, I'm a good person. I show up to work every day. My lunch is 30 minutes. I take 29 and a half uh, because I'm a good person. Uh, but the truth of the matter is this. Uh, uh, watch this, Jayla. The truth of the matter is this. Uh, no matter how good we are, uh, our ladder will never reach heaven. That's right. So no matter how good we are, when we put that ladder up through Christ, we ain't never going to get to heaven. And we're going to show you this week how when you talk to people who have good morals and a good morality ladder, we can show them that ladder still keeps them short of God's glory. Yeah. 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 That's right. yeah. Then in two weeks, Bell, we're going to talk about the Romans road. Yeah, yeah, because what the Romans road is going to do is help us understand that thing. How we can use scripture because some people will ask. Now, let me say that I don't want to scare nobody because you don't need to be a Bible scholar to tell your story. That's right, Amen. you don't need to be a Bible scholar to tell your story because I don't you, know, Jesus, like you know, yes, what God's done for you. And as awesome as the word of God is, I can't find your story in here. Uh -huh. And there's some people, watch this. Who, as much as they appreciate Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they need to hear your story. Amen. Amen. But there are some people, though, you all, who need to hear what God said in the Bible before they want to come and accept him. And in two weeks, we're going to show us, Daphne, how to use the word of God to help us share him with somebody else so that other people can come to know him for themselves as the Lord and Savior, because that's what he, he wants us, you all, to be ready to share our faith, because we are what's called difference makers. Y'all yes. miss that? We are what somebody say, difference makers. Yeah, we are, you all, what's called difference makers, and so difference makers should be ready at all times. But the last thing I want to show you in the last few minutes, Cora, is we have to have everyday preparation. Yeah, yeah, yeah every day, we got to be ready. Every, yes. every day, we got to get ourselves ready. Whether you, whether you say every or er. <laughs> Either way, all your prayer and proper every day. Yes. We must avail ourselves yes. to be able to, to, to accurately share and disseminate the word of God to someone so that God can know, just other people know just how good our God is. <laughs> whether you want it proper or you want it like the millennials every day. Yes. Er day, we need to tell somebody yes. how good our God is. Yes. Now, 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 the church at Ephesus, I kind of mentioned a moment ago, Marjorie, the church at Ephesus uh, was in a town of, of idol worshipers. Ephesus was so bad, you all. They had a temple there, Stiesha, dedicated to a goddess named Diana. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and, and the virgin, virgins would go to the temple and sleep with the priests of the temple. And that's what they felt was their duty and honor to do this. When God sent Sarabana, Paul, to Ephesus, and Ephesus had a special place in his heart. And it, it was so dynamic. The ministry of Paul was so dynamic during Ephesus that not only did they tear down the idol of Diana, but a large church grew up out of there because God can use difference makers every place. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Oh my God, he can use difference makers everywhere. And so 
they now Paul writes this letter to them, though, mother, to the church of Ephesus before he's in prison, before he dies, because he knows something. He knows that once he dies, if he does not encourage them now, false worship is going to come back. If he doesn't encourage them now, idol worship is going to make a comeback. And anytime Satan comes back, he's going to come back hard. So he writes this letter to them. Put the verse up there, please, Nalisha. He writes to them to encourage them. He says, now pray for me that when I speak, God will give me words so that when I tell the secret, there it is again, the good news, I can tell it without fear. Now he's trying to encourage them, Sister Cato, to get them understand that just as I want to say this without fear, I want you to say it without fear also. Because yes. when nobody else is around, you still need to be a difference maker. Yes, yes, yes. When nobody else seems to want to help you, you still need to be the difference maker yes. in somebody else's life. That's why God has you, where God has you and has prepared you like he prepared you. And regardless of where we are, regardless of you all of what's happened, good news is always, somebody say good news. Good news. good news. good news is always good news. And so we must be prepared, you all, to share the good news every time God gives us opportunity. Yes, 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 yes. First Peter chapter 3, verse number 15, God has Peter to write like this, but respect Christ as the Holy Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to answer everyone who asks you to explain about the hope that you have. Now, he was writing this, you all, to some saints who were scattered in places they didn't want to be. That's and right. because they were work with Christ where they didn't want to be, they were tempted to start acting like the places they were. And because they didn't like where they were, they were tempted to stop acting like Jesus where they were. And Paul says, no, understand something. You got to respect him all the time and always be ready in case somebody says why do you have hope in the midst of this hell yeah. you can say I'm glad you asked yeah. yeah. let me tell you yeah. about my Jesus yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. my yeah. God yeah. let's show now I'm going to say that one more time why do you have hope they're talking about Ukraine why do you have hope they're talking about Turkey and the Kurds why do you have hope they talk about impeachment all the time. Why you got hope there's murders in Chicago? Why you got hope Illinois is all messed up? Why you got hope they laying people off their jobs? Why you got hope doctors got bad news? Why you got hope the economy is bad for a lot of us? Why you got hope? Where's well, my hope? It's not in Trump. My hope is not in the dollar. My hope is not in my doctor. My hope.
to make a difference. Yes. As you go, day by day, you have the power. Here my rest of you feel free to challenge you. Here my rest to challenge you. Yeah, I'm going to read this challenge to you. We're going to stand the call. I'm done. Now it's your turn to live it out. God wants his children, you all, to identify more with his spirit than we do our flesh. Hallelujah. To do this requires we view everyday moments through the lens of his spirit. To embrace this helps us understand and embrace the fact that in God, there are only purposeful moments. Yes. The challenge in this week, you all, is to identify and take advantage of the everyday moments yes. in which God allows us a chance to share the, his good news with someone who does not know him. Ask God this week, God, show me the everyday moments where I can tell somebody else about you. Show me the everyday moments. My, Show me, God, who's in the desert around me. Mm -hmm. That co-worker you know, like everybody talk about. Mm -hmm. Instead of laughing with your co-workers, go talk to them. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. That neighbor, that, that, that neighbor, we call the cat lady. Mm -hmm. I might go to the cat lady house. <laughs> I heard she eat kids in the cat lady house. <laughs> Overgrown, still talking about cat ladies eat kids. <laughs> You ain't been 12 in years. <laughs> Grown people, that's a cat lady house. A kid eating cat lady house. <laughs> Instead of talking about her, don't you go around no bell. Because she may be living in the desert. Take advantage of the everyday moments. To share. That, that, that's just the challenge, you all. And then keep a record of how the conversations go so that we can celebrate them together next week. I want you to Keep a record, and then we come next week, you all. And as we go into the first three illustrations uh, next week, I want us to be able to celebrate mm -hmm. what you did this week. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And sharing your story yep. and inviting someone. God, we love you. We bless you. We thank you. We magnify you. We celebrate you. We extol you. Thank you, dear God, for the power of everyday moments. Thank you, dear God, you've prepared us to make a difference. Thank you, dear God, if you're going to give us illustrations of faith, the way we can help somebody else yes. not be stuck where they are. And thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, uh, that every day we can be prepared. Every day we're prepared. Every day we're ready yes. to tell somebody not just what we believe, but why we believe. What we believe and why we believe and whom we believe. Yes. Whom with a capital W is you. Yes. You are the one in whom we believe. And help us in every day to use, dear God, the opportunities you give to us. Forgive us for the times we, we, we've been so consumed with ourselves. So consumed with how we feel about somebody. We never stop to think how you feel about them. You're the daddy. You're the creator. Forgive us for the times, dear God, we've been so upset with ourselves and consumed with ourselves. That we spend more time criticizing the places you put us. Instead of transforming the places you send us. Help us to view every opportunity, dear God, to operate in hope in you. So before we get to work, dear God, let us say what we expect you to exceed and do abundantly above. Before we go to the next family gather, let us say what we expect you to exceed and do abundantly above. Before, God, we go to the doctor, let us say what we expect to exceed and abundantly above through you. We bless you for it. We love you for it. We magnify you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, y'all. Bless God. Now, come on. We're going to bless God.